Arizona State football getting the season started on a nice note with a 40-3 victory over NAU. Welcome in everybody, my name is Nick Borgia. Alongside me is our publisher, Hode Urbino at Devil's Digest, and this is our post-game analysis. So, Hode, we did a lot of talking beforehand about how these early non-conference games, you know, not a whole lot of meaning, maybe not a whole lot to be gained from, but when you beat a team as soundly as ASU did tonight, you can't really apologize for a whole lot. No, I absolutely agree, Nick, and you're right. I mean, it really is the, the no-win game. Uh, you, you dominated the team that, 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 that you are supposed to dominate. But one thing you and I talked about in the game preview, I mean, there, were, there are so many doubts surrounding this team, especially, especially I believe, on the, on the offensive side. So when, 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 when you do score 40 points, when you do uh, gain uh, over 440 yards of offense, and for the most part, really have a, a smooth operating unit with, with a lot of new faces and a lot of key positions, then I, 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 I definitely don't feel that there was any reason for ASU to, you know, to, to apologize or really to minimize uh, you know, what they did right now. Because look, if your expectations are that low of Arizona State and they went ahead and absolutely took care of business against a team that just about this time last year uh, did beat your rival down south. So I, I think uh, that, that this has done nothing really to, I would say, dismiss or really just um, don't just really overlook. And I, I think that by and large, uh, you know, for a season opener, it did look like a good team, a team that maybe presented much less question marks after the game than they did going into the game. So let's talk about that offense with all the new faces, all the new transfers, so many players that have never seen this field or put on the maroon and gold. They looked like a well-oiled machine. I mean, what was your reaction to that, Ode? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, when, when you do gain uh, overall 419 uh, yards on offense, uh, 267 yards, I, I believe, on the ground. Uh, Xavier Valde, the running back transfer from Wyoming, uh, even though the guy did absolutely uh, amazing in the Mountain West, looks like this was a, a veteran Pac-12 uh, the running back and really, you know, time will tell if he can really duplicate the numbers that Rashad White put, uh, put up last year. But I think at least tonight, and I know it's a, a less caliber opponent. I'm not dismiss, dismissing that whatsoever, but the way that, that, that he does run, run, run downhill and really is able to just gain a lot of chunk, a chunk of yards in a lot of his carries, I think did, did at least remind you a lot of, of Rashad White. Uh, did have 116 yards uh, rushing, averaged over seven yards a carry. Uh, did, you know, really, really did uh, score two touchdowns. So uh, I think, and that's just in terms of the running game, that was probably one aspect of the offense where I don't think a lot of people really had uh, too, too many question marks, too much uh, level of apprehension, and I think uh, really proved uh, tonight. Again, you could talk about an NAU defense not only from the FCS caliber, but also a defense that struggled a lot last year and not uh, really uh, able to uh, show that much improvement from 2021. But nonetheless, you know, we talk about just not, not apologizing. Ultimately, there are going to be some games where you just have to dominate the teams you're supposed to dominate, and that's exactly what, what, what the ASU offense did right now. Obviously, a, a, a quiet day uh, passing-wise. Uh, Emory Jones had um, uh, 15, uh, 13 of 18 uh, yards passing, 152 yards. Uh, the, the, there were no passing touchdowns. And I know some folks were probably a, a, little, a little upset uh, by, the, by the paltry numbers, if you will. But, oh, but uh, another thing you and I, Nick, talked about in the preview, that ASU did not want to crack uh, this playbook wide open on offense or on defense, for that matter. So I don't. I think not seeing a lot of razzle dazzle uh, uh, passing plays uh, tonight really should not come as any surprise whatsoever. I think they did for the most part when they had to move the chains uh, via the air. They actually did pretty well. Uh, another thing we talked about a lot in the preseason, really even going back to the spring, is how much the tight ends are going to be involved in the passing game. Again, I don't think that ASU even showed uh, an iota of what they can do uh, with that group in the aerial attack, but Messiah Swinson, the tight end uh, to transfer from, from Missouri, th the three receptions of uh, 50 yards. So if anybody thought it was gonna be lip service that ASU is gonna use the tight ends in the passing game, uh, even in a somewhat conservative offense today, uh, they, they, they did actually that with Swinson. And really just overall, Emory Jones, I, I, I really think just operated the offense really, really well, showed the, the true dual uh, quarterback uh, skills that, that we thought he, he was going to display. I think his decision making for the most part was really, was really, really sound, both when he passed the ball and both, both when he ran the ball. And uh, really, I just think overall there's uh, definitely a lot of optimism uh, about this offense. Sure, you, you, you do want to see the passing game uh, really uh, start producing at, at, at higher numbers. And again, I think it's just still a function of really not tipping your hand when it comes to the offensive playbook. and. Next week at Oklahoma State, I think will be 
maybe a little bit smarter as to the capabilities of this uh, passing game for the Sun Devils. Absolutely, and defensively, obviously, a super dominant performance from the Sun Devils. They kept NAU out of the end zone all night long, but there were two pick sixes that got called back due to penalty. Obviously something you don't want to see if you're a Sun Devil fan, but is that reminiscent at all of what we saw last season with all the penalties and the problems that we had there on the Sun Devils? It really was a cruel cool deja vu, Nick. I mean, we think, talk about all the penalties from 2021 and how this team is going to do much better on that department. And here you go, week one, not one, but two pick sixes are nullified uh, by, by penalties. Yes, it, it really is uh, frustrating to the fans. Maybe it was the only blemish that the ASU defense had, Nick, but it definitely was a huge blemish because uh, this score could be even more of a laugher if those uh, two, two pick sixes were not nullified uh, by, by penalties. Uh, one was an offside call by Anthony Cooper. One was a holding penalty by Omar Norman Lott. But the fact that the defense was opportunistic, I think they had overall uh, three interceptions. Uh, linebacker Kyle, Kyle Soley had, had the third one. Really, the, the only three points that did uh, NAU score was actually on a, on a, on a fumble uh, that uh, there was a sack, a sack and a fumble where uh, NAU was able to recover the ball uh, deep in ASU territory. But, uh, but overall, this NAU, NAU offense, I think, in contrast to their defense, actually it is a pretty decent group. They do have at the SF level you know, pretty good playmakers, but I think uh, the Arizona State defense uh, prepared really, really, really well. Defensive coordinator Donnie Henderson said after the game that he wanted to keep the playbook uh, his own playbook, I should say, also re really uh, uh, cracked, uh, not cracked open, really, re really shut closed. And I think uh, that was really just a an icing on the cake that you're able to dominate the way you are. And again, you're not tipping your hand to Oklahoma State as, as to what uh, what you can really do with more with, with more uh, with more creative call, uh, play calling. Uh, but I think it's overall, Nick, uh, we didn't have that many concerns about the defense uh, going going into the season. And after what we saw tonight, I don't think that really changes anybody's opinion. Again, I know you always have to keep the caliber of opponent in, in mind, but, but, but nonetheless, when you dominate the teams that you're supposed to dominate, there's, there really is, none, none, there really, really is none, nothing to apologize about. Granted, uh, the two penalties that you mentioned uh, are a blemish. Uh, it's going to be uh, some ugly moments in, in, in that film session, I'm, I'm sure. But, uh, but overall, uh, I think there's a lot to be excited about this defense and, and, and their capabilities. And you mentioned Oklahoma State for next week, so that's where the Sun Devils are headed to play. And Oklahoma State had a different game in comparison to ASU tonight. A uh, high scoring one of Central Michigan, I believe it was 58-46 or? 58-44. 58-44, so super high scoring, and that begs the question, does that show any kinks in the Oklahoma State armor? I mean, what are we dealing with here? Yeah, I mean, look, it, granted it was a game that I think at one point was 51-15 Oklahoma State, and uh, they really let the foot off the gas pedal maybe just a little too much because I think uh, uh, the, the visitors from uh, from uh, Central Michigan scored, I believe, uh, 22 points in the fourth quarter alone. So, again, you know, I don't think there's really really anything to, to gloss over. And, look, let's be honest. I mean, if ASU gave up tonight, uh, you know, 20 points in the fourth quarter to NAU, even if they still win by, by two or more touchdowns, I don't think uh, fans are just uh, really, uh, you know, skip-hopping happy out, out, out of Sun Devil Stadium right now. So, whether whether it's really kinks in the armor or not, uh, it, it's hard uh, it's hard to tell. Uh, I mean, there's no doubt that the second teamers for Oklahoma State on on the defensive side are the ones that really caused all that damage, if you will. And maybe we're going to see less and less of those players the next week against ASU. But nonetheless, um, I, I think that maybe there are some areas to exploit. I wouldn't get you know too excited. I mean, there still is a, a top, top 15 uh, team, and you are going to their house uh, ne 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 next week and what should be maybe the toughest matchup uh, of the entire year, especially on the road. But, uh, you know, I, I just think that ASU is maybe feeling a little better about themselves than, than compared to Oklahoma State. What that means in Stillwater a uh, week from Saturday, we'll see. All right, well, we'll talk more about Oklahoma State next week as we prepare for that game. But in the meantime, I've been Nick Borgia for Devil's Digest. This is our publisher, Hoda Bino. And we thank you so much for tuning in. As always, be sure to check us out at devilsdigest.com, at Devil's Digest on Twitter for all of your comprehensive practice reports, game pieces, sights and sounds, you name it, we have it. So check us out, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for tuning in.